in 360 BC, the famous Greek philosopher Plato produced two dialogues where a wondrous ancient land was mentioned, far more sophisticated than its dates would suggest. According to the story, Atlantis, a huge island with powerful kings, had been created by deities only to be destroyed in a series of earthquakes and floods after a battle with ancient Athens. This is not the classical period Athens we're all familiar with. This is way older. The story of Atlantis had supposedly been told to the Athenian statesman Solon a couple of hundred years earlier by an Egyptian priest. No one knows if Plato was talking about a real place or a mythological location. It's also possible he was using it as an allegory to teach. But Atlantis has been front and center in popular imagination ever since. Many people have used it in works of fiction, others in more serious discussions about the idea of a utopian society, but there are also many individuals who think it may have been a real island and who do research on exactly where it might have been. Intriguingly, the date given for the demise of this unforgettable land coincides with the end of the Younger Dryas period. For those of you who don't know, the Younger Dryas period was a time of climatic upheaval that started just as the Earth was emerging from the last glacial maximum of the Ice Age and ended around a thousand years later. That could be seen as quite a coincidence. Many places have been suggested as the remnants of this magnificent realm. Malta has had its fair share of attention, so in this video I'm going to discuss the main reasons why Malta might hold the key to this mystery. No one actually knows why Malta is called Malta. There are various theories, but it's not known for certain where the name came from. Most place names within Malta can be traced back to the Arabic period and the Arabic language, but the name Malta is thought to derive from the Greek and Roman name for the island, which was Melita, meaning honey, because of its history of beekeeping. However, some people have pointed out that in Plato's Critias, Atlantis is given to a son of the deity Poseidon and his mortal lover Plato. They name this son Atlas, and Atlas, spelt backwards, is Salta, which isn't hugely different to Malta. It seems like a bit of a stretch, but who knows? The dialogues talk about Atlantis being on the outside of the Pillars of Hercules, and attempting to have control over the lands within it, including a very ancient Athenian civilization. They also talk about a vast continent on the other side of a real ocean, which is reachable via Atlantis. The Pillars of Hercules are thought to be the two sides of the Strait of Gibraltar, which puts Atlantis in the Atlantic Ocean. In this context, the continent mentioned does sound distinctly like the Americas, a little strange, considering they hadn't been discovered by then. But either which way, this removes the Mediterranean as an option for the location of Atlantis, unless the original oral and written traditions were misinterpreted over time, or unless the Pillars of Hercules do not refer to the sides of the Strait of Gibraltar. However, one thing that people don't talk much about is that according to the story, following the war between Atlantis and an hitherto unheard of incredibly ancient Athens, a war between the lands outside the Pillars of Hercules and those within it, the earthquakes and floods that followed actually affected both civilizations. Athens was also destroyed and only the illiterate people in the mountains survived. Repeated cataclysms over the next 9,000 years caused the islands within the Mediterranean to change many times and for the modern day Athens and its Acropolis to be quite different in geological makeup to before. In fact, it says that where the Acropolis stands today, a fountain once stood which was destroyed by the earthquake. So perhaps Malta wasn't the illustrious Atlantis mentioned in the text but was part of an extensive Athenian civilization that stretched across the Mediterranean. Even though the temples are dated to the Neolithic period about 5,500 years ago, which is 6,000 years after the destruction of Atlantis, some people think that parts of them might be a lot older. Since radiocarbon dating relies on organic remains, the theory is that any organic remains from that earlier time period may have been lost, especially if the islands had experienced repeated cataclysms. So perhaps the temple people did come to Malta in the Neolithic, but this was to re-establish the home of their ancestors. 
there are a number of fossiliferous bone caves in Malta where the remains of Ice Age fauna have been found. These must have been carried into the caves or fissures by flooding. Experts know this because of the smoothness of pebbles found within them, which are the result of moving water, and various other indicators. During the Ice Age, Malta had a much wetter climate with huge rivers which have long since dried up. So it's quite likely that overflowing rivers could have caused the movement of this fauna. There's also the possibility that catastrophic flooding caused the movement and deposition of not just Ice Age animals, but also human skeletons. In Echoes of Plato's Island by Mifsud, Mifsud, Sultan and Ventura, the authors note that when the hypogeum of House Avliani was excavated, disarticulated human bones and Neolithic pottery were found mixed up in a huge volume of red soil that looked as though it had come from the surrounding fields. Experts do not see the bones as primary burials, but rather as having been deposited later on, perhaps as some sort of ritual. They also think the hypogeum had a dual purpose, both funerary and something similar to what took place at the above ground temples. However, the authors in Echoes of Plato's Island theorize that the bones had actually washed into the underground monument from rock cut tombs in the surrounding area. Exactly the same thing was encountered at the nearby Santa Lucia Hypogeum during partial excavations. It has yet to be fully excavated. Cart ruts aren't unique to Malta, but nowhere else has so many. There are hundreds of them and no one knows exactly how old they are or what they were for. There were arguments for and against them having been a transport system. Nearly all of these parallel tracks have a gauge of 1.4 meters. Some are deep, others are shallow. Some are straight, others are curved. Some are single, others are doubled. Some are on flat land and others go up hills. Experts think they date to the Bronze Age or possibly even later to the Classical period. However, nothing is certain. And where there is uncertainty, there is room for speculation. Some people think they may date back to that. Ice Age and be the remnants of the lost land of Atlantis. Um, there are two other reasons for this. Firstly, there is a cart rut that goes under the sea in St. George's Bay, Berza Bruja. Secondly, because there is a cart rut that goes off the edge of a cliff. These ruts have led to the idea that they date to a time when the sea levels were much lower and the island much bigger. However, experts say these anomalies are the result of more recent seismic activity. In the 1800s, the architect of Mostar Dome, a huge church in central Malta, Giorgio Grenier de Vasse, developed an obsession with the idea that the country was the remnant of Atlantis. He sought to prove his theory. In the 1820s, he reported that a priest had dug up a stone in his garden in Amdina that had a Phoenician inscription on it mentioning Malta as being the fabled Atlantis. Both Giorgio and the priest informed a Forche de Bain in Paris and he presented the finds to the Asiatic Society. At some point, a manuscript was also discovered by a friend of Giorgio's called Louis Domini de Rienzi. The original text, written by a Eumelos of Cyrene, supposedly got lost in a shipwreck, but had referred to Aristippus's History of Libya, where Atlantis was mentioned as being located in the central Mediterranean. Forcha Durban was also quick to present this intriguing find to the Asiatic society. In Echoes of Plato's Island, the author's reproduce some of this text from the appendix to the historical guide to the island of Malta and its dependencies. It says, Ninus, king of Babylon, nephew of the famous Ogesia, the latter was the king of Atlantis, the island which once existed between Libya and Sicily and which was submerged. This large island was known as Decapolis Atlantica by our forefathers of Cyrene as well as by the ancient Greeks. Ogige was the king who governed the famous island at the time of the horrible inundation. The summit of Mount Atlas, which was situated in the middle of the island Atlantica, was not submerged. This summit of Mount Atlas has preserved the name of Ogige from that of its last king. And it is, in fact, this circumstance why we still know as Ogigia that island which once exists between Libya and Sicily. It's nothing more than the summit of the Mount of Atlantica. Now some, 
Not all classicists think that Malta is the island of Ogesia as mentioned in the Odyssey, which according to this text just mentioned is equated with Atlantica. In fact, is this idea that gave the Calypso cave in Gozo its name as the place where Odysseus was kept captive by the nymph Calypso. Unfortunately, the inscription and the manuscript were debunked as forgeries soon after. But Giorgio continued to believe in Atlantis and wrote a paper arguing that a polygonal wall he had found near Musta was a part of the lost city. This wall has never been found or seen by anyone else, and the map he drew of its location is the same place where Fort Mosta now stands, so it's unlikely to have survived if it was ever there in the first place. The German Jesuit scholar Athanasius Kirchner drew a map of what he thought Atlantis might have looked like. Since sea levels would have been lower during the time it supposedly existed, Malta would have been a lot larger. In fact, Malta and Goza were joined together at that time. Malta has several large dry valley systems that would have once held rivers running into the sea, and it's tempting to see Kirshner's map as representing these, along with the higher land of Umdina and Rabat. In fact, the smaller top part looks like Gozo tacked onto a larger Malta. Incidentally, Kirshner did visit Malta. He was familiar with the island. However, he placed this island in the, the Atlantic Ocean on his map as per the description in the dialogues. So if the two civilizations known as Atlantis and Athens did exist in the very ancient past, could either of them be in Malta? The geography and dating need quite a bit of an elasticity for that to be the case, but the theory is not without its merits. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Patreon if you would like to support the channel and my work in that way. For a guide to the sites I visit, go to my website and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more content.